Welcome back to Dairy Public Radio. Reporting from the basement of the Dairy Civic Center, this is CM Alexander with the news. Grown men on bicycles have been seen in alarming numbers around Dairy in recent weeks. Local bike shop Mike's Bikes, opened by local historian Mike Hanlon in 1985, claims the increase in both nostalgia and gas prices are to blame. I'd bike to work myself, but I don't like being too tired. You're listening to Dairy Public Radio. This is Dairy Public Radio. Welcome back to Dairy Public Radio, a bi-weekly Stephen King Book Club podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Joshua Cowan, alongside CM Alexander. Hello, everyone. And Benjamin Graham. Hey, Council Readers. And today we are covering the original miniseries of It, thanks to Rachel Jansen's selection of It from our Patreon selection series. And we have Sam leading our discussion. Sam, take it away. Thanks, Josh. Before we begin, I just want to say we might sound a little muffled for this episode because (laughs) COVID is nuts right now in our area and probably many areas. So we're masked up. Mm -hmm. So we watched the 1990 miniseries It. And can I give this away? Can I just say it? Give it away. We're also going to cover the movies on our Patreon. So <laughs> we're going to do we're going to do it all. And uh, for five dollars a month, you can listen to that if you're not already a member and then cancel it. God, CM, stop telling people to cancel things uh, right away. Yep. Download it and then just cancel <laughs> it, man. <laughs> a few things I want to point out before we begin just about the cast and crew. So the director of the miniseries is Tom Wallace. You guys might know him. From Halloween 3, the best Halloween. The That's the Sans Michael Myers Halloween, correct? Yeah. Season of the Witch. Season of the Witch. That is a movie. I'm not going to look at you. <laughs> Fright Night 2. Never seen it. Oh, and other stuff that doesn't intrigue me as much. So <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> but he's he's a you know, well-known prolific director. The stars Harry Anderson who was Judge Stone from oh. Night Court. He's Richie. <laughs> Night Court. Stars is not the right word. Uh, well, he died in 2018. No, he was no, also I can't talk too much <laughs> I, I <know. laughs> He was also a magician, you guys. <laughs> yeah, that was like his whole deal, was. is he was a comedian, air quotes, but really he just loved close-up magic. Who doesn't? That's why on Night Court <laughs> he was constantly doing close-up magic. <laughs> A, a k- kajishan? What? What? Comedian magician. Oh. <laughs> Ben's ashamed. <laughs> Dennis Christopher plays Eddie, and he was in Fade to Black, which is a really cool, I think it's late 70s, just like kind of psychological drama movie. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Richard Macer, Major? I'm saying that wrong, I'm sure, as Stan. Also does a lot of stuff, not familiar with it, so not going to list it out. Annette O'Toole is Bev, and she's also known for a lot of, yeah, Superman (laughs) Superman stuff. Tim, I think my notes messed up. Tim is Mike. Um, He was on that 70s show. (laughs) I don't have his last name now. John Ritter as Ben. He died in 2003. Mm -hmm. And, of course, people know him from Three's Company. Richard Thomas is Bill, best known for his ponytail in The Waltons. (laughs) Josh, you called this a three-ponytail movie. (laughs) It's... Just too much, too many ponytail, too much ponytail. <laughs> and of course, Tim Curry as Pennywise, who's just amazing and kills it. I also want to mention that Olivia Hussey plays Audra, Bill's wife, and yeah, she, she. Oh, well, <laughs> hey man, I'm with you. She was in Black Christmas, which is an awesome movie, and Mick Garris's Psycho Four. She plays Norman Bates's mom. I did not know that. Can I list the kids? Is this too? Go like, for it. Okay. So the child cast includes early roles for Jonathan Brandis as Bill, and he also died. We have three individuals who are now dead. He died in 2003, before he was 30, which is horrible. For me, he's the kid from The NeverEnding Story. Seth Green as Richie. He's in, Seth Green's in everything. Yes, it's Seth Green as Seth Green. But he's in Buffy, which is what I know him from, primarily. Emily Perkins as Bev. Have you guys seen Ginger Snaps? No, I have not. So good. Werewolf stuff. Brandon Crane is the young Ben who has a cameo in the recent It movie, which is really cool. It's a great cameo. 
Adam Ferrazzi as Eddie. He was in RoboCop 2. Ben Heller as Stan. He was in the Georgie TV show spinoff. Wait, what? Sorry, what? There's a, a Georgie spinoff, like, what really happened to Georgie or something? I don't know anything what? about it. Wait, you how dare you? The lead. <laughs> what are you talking about? There was a TV spinoff oh, of it? Yeah, I don't know if it ever went anywhere. Because I'm uh, making notes as I'm watching. Stop so. the podcast. <laughs> Let's research this and meet back in 25. I'm so much more interested. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, Marlon Taylor as the young Mike, and he was in Z Nation. This was a $12 million budget, had 30 million viewers. Yeah, it, it was pretty well received at the time. So I guess... Uh, we can save what we if we agree or disagree with that to the end. But. I, I, I want to start by saying, especially, I'm glad that you shout out all of the child actors. Josh, you notoriously <laughs> hate child actors. I sure, and do. you may disagree with me here. I think the kids in this are hands down the best part. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. The the scenes with the Losers Club as kids are so much more engaging. The kids are so... What's the word I'm looking for? They have chemistry. Yeah, they they absolutely have chemistry with each other. And I'm glad you shouted them out because not all of them went on to, like, big careers. Mm -hmm. Uh, But one of the, the trivia that... My favorite piece of trivia that I read was that after they filmed this, all the kid actors... We're just legit best friends. <laughs> that makes awesome. sense based on what we saw on screen. And I, I absolutely love to think that the cast <laughs> of it just kept in touch for years. Yeah. I, I hope that is true. Well, at least 27, hopefully, so they could all come back. And, <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> Uh, in this it is, 30, it in is 30 years. years. Jesus, yeah. It is one of those, the few times I will agree that the, what we discussed before the child side of this whole story Mm -hmm. is way more interesting Mm -hmm. in and of itself. And it could have been done as a stylistic choice, but it wasn't uh, that we do know that when the adults come back and they get together, they fall into those old childish roles. And it just felt like the adult side of the story. They all just kind of, they kept acting childish despite Mm -hmm. giving no sign that there was a reason for it, which makes me feel like that's not a choice. Yeah, and I I was going to try to save this like for more towards the end, but it kind of ties in with what you're saying because a lot of – well, this is a, a TV thing, and I think it suffers what all do. I, I'm not saying it wasn't well done or I don't respect the material and that I didn't enjoy it, but kind of like you know, one of our favorite directors, Mick Garris, did the Stand miniseries, and I think – you, you always lose some of that tension having to adapt things for TV that I, as a viewer, miss. Like a lot of the horror stuff, a lot of mm-hmm, very much. the, oddly, like some of the pacing around things that will make it more tense, even though you feel like you should have more time. When it comes to movie stuff, I'm not intelligent enough about it to really <laughs> explain why that might be. But for me personally, I'm never going to, it's like that era of 90 TV shows. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. I can explain to you why that doesn't work. Okay. Uh, it is because when you have to, yes, you have so much more time. We ripped Tommy Knockers apart about this also. Mm-hmm. When you, you have so much time, how do you not get things right? When you're doing that for TV, you're talking about commercial breaks. Mm-hmm. So with commercial breaks, you can't, you have all this time, but you can't drop a commercial break in the middle of an intense yeah. scene without making it a cliffhanger. You kill the then tension. how much do you it's it's trying to balance that out so certain scenes become uh filler because they don't mm-hmm. want to ramp up the tension just to go to break just to come back. Because let's face it, at the time this was being made, they never thought years from now people will watch this in one sitting on yeah. DVD. And you, I, it's always, it's a little bit of nostalgia watching something like this yes. mm. in one sitting because you're like, oh, there was that. Well, it would have been a commercial <laughs> break. You know, people of a certain age will not understand what that feeling mm. is. They're, well, they won't have the nostalgia feeling. They'll be like, that was a weird <laughs> editing choice. Oh my God. I have never even thought of that. <laughs> Oh, that's very depressing. It is I a depressing. want to sit down with a kid and like watch. <laughs> A, a 90s made-for-TV movie and have them be like, 
see what they think the reasoning for these <laughs> weird blackouts are. Oh Honestly, God. it's the whole reason I had a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the truth comes out. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> Jeez. All right, so let's get into this adaptation. Overall, it does follow everything pretty faithfully. It is like obviously the source material was very well respected. We start with our our brothers again. Ah, oh, that little boy who plays Georgie. See, He's this so cute. This is where you're both wrong and right because About what? Because that's not where this starts. And I always remember it starting with Georgie. Because in my brain, that's how it starts. You're right. But it starts with Mike going to the crime scene, uh, adult Mike going to a crime scene, finding the picture of Georgie. In a scene I entirely forget about. And I think it's because the Georgie scene is so engaging, you forget anything happened before that. I, and because this scene with Mike is not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no context for it yet yeah, in the show. It's I, supposed to hook you in, but it doesn't really do that the way that the Georgie scene does. I mm. literally, when we started this, watching this, I thought, oh, it doesn't start with that. It starts with this. I'll have to remember <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to remember again until I'm editing this later. <laughs> but that that whole, what did you guys think of how they portrayed that sewer scene? Because that is such a... Um, crazy part of the book there's so much horror and tension in reading that or listening to it it gets me every time it's absolutely iconic and it is just as much the how iconic the scene from the book is and it is half how fucking iconic tim curry is <laughs> yep yes for sure yeah. I, th- this entire podcast could just be us ranting about how good Tim Curry is. <laughs> I love Legend. I Fern Gully. Okay. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. Clue. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was a fun game. <laughs> um, but the way I don't know it because now that I'm thinking about it, like how much the performance is iconic, but it's just as iconic in the movies. Mm -hmm. So how much is it really, it's the scene is just that good. But I think that in the remakes, it gets so much attention because this made it so iconic. Yeah, it's a big part of the beginning of the book for sure. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. I feel like that moment was the scariest thing that had ever been on television, on (laughs) primetime television when it happened. Mm -hmm. Because I know many people that gave nightmares to. (laughs) And I, I feel like I'm a little desensitized to it still because we've we've had so many years of things also being faster paced but also willing to especially on tv even be more in your face like gory Mm -hmm. and violent and it's interesting because i say that but at the same time i feel like this miniseries just bulldozed rushed blasted through this whole story it was so it was a long miniseries but it was so quick the, like even just meeting all of our our child characters, they all come together very quickly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the, the first solid hour is basically just introducing the adult characters. It mm-hmm. feels like I, I like how they do it though, because they they nail the back and forth. Mm-hmm. Yes, which is part of the thing that I love so much about the book is, is the the cutting back and forth between the two time periods and visually. Uh, and pacing wise, yeah, they really nail it. Yeah, they weren't just faithful to the story in, in the major points. They tried to show it to us the way it happened as closely as they could. I feel like, and they did a good job with rearranging the things they did. For instance, uh, Beverly's bathroom full of blood. All seven losers are together for that moment, not just four of them. They, mm-hmm. when they're introducing the adults, they save Stan's reveal for the last reveal. Which is just, having that be the closing of the first half yeah. is so effective. Mm-hmm. It was a great move. Can I say the thing that bothered me the most? Yeah. Uh, it's about Bill. Was it his ponytail? It, well, my, that poor actor is not his <laughs> fault. <laughs> it, I, I did make a note that says Bill has a ponytail. Stop it. Because <laughs> um, Bill's bald. That's not, that's, you couldn't be more wrong <laughs> <laughs> with your description. No, what bothered me was 
the stutter, by which I mean the lack of stutter. He stutters both the child and adult version of Bill stutter maybe 10 times total the entire three hours. And I could see why maybe you would make the case for not doing it uh, Mm -hmm. because it kind of slows down the pace and everything. Uh, Or it could, I don't know, uh, it might turn some audience members off uh, with that being our main protagonist. But we listen to the audiobook and it can be done well. And not ruin anything. God, how would Steven Weber play a child and an adult <laughs> at the same time? <laughs> Wigs, man. Uh, <laughs> Ponytails. But it was, it's, it's something that undermines that character, I feel like. And especially adult Bill, when he stutters, he throws his whole head like he's shaking the words out of his brain. Like, it's just mm-hmm. so over the top that... And the child version delivers these monologues without a single utterance of a stutter. And they I feel like every time they did it, they had to be like, oh, guys, stuttering Bill. You got to mm-hmm. make sure he he only has three words to say in the sentence. Make sure he stutters one of those three words. I don't disagree. Ben, Th- thank do, you. Do you have an opinion? I see your point. Honestly, I think that they did an OK job of portraying the stutter um i'm not a huge fan of portraying stuff like that by you know it's kind of it could come off as insensitive yes portraying something like that and i think they did it well without it becoming cartoon like or like mean-spirited it's it's a very fine line i just i wish it's such a, an important part of Bill, especially at the at the end, at the the face off with the tongue twister. That is a big thing that builds mm-hmm. up, and it it doesn't feel earned because we've only heard it yeah. a few yeah. times. I just I would have liked a touch more. Don't didn't have to go over the top. Just a little bit more would have been great. You know what I would have liked to see more of Patrick in- Hockstetter. <laughs> <laughs> no. I would have loved to see any evidence of Richie being funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, agreed. Fully agreed. Uh, I, I, I really want to talk. If we if we're we can talk like character to character. We can because the it, it the, just follows the plot so well. We'd be basically talking about the book again. <laughs> ex- exactly. But I, I really want to talk about Richie in particular because he is simultaneously the best part of this Mm -hmm. miniseries (laughs) and the worst (laughs) because Seth Green Mm -hmm. does fantastic as Kid Richie. I almost want to say the reason I liked the character Richie so much may be because of the portrayal of Kid Richie in the book or in in this miniseries rather because at a certain point, I think the first time we meet Richie, he says... (laughs) Chuckalicious, <laughs> and Seth Green manages it to say it in such a way that I didn't want to punch him. <laughs> like he says it and pulls off saying <laughs> some of the wackest dialogue, <laughs> and that's impressive. Ugh, it really is. On the other hand, uh, adult Richie, <laughs> oh, God, we are. <laughs> we, we are are shown. His stand-up act, I can't. I can't. <laughs> it's, a, it's a I cool want, shot because it's a full one shot. I want you guys to share your perspective on this, having been on stage as comedians, because it's really cool for me to hear you guys talk about the way this scene was done and what it must have been like. So the uh, one of the things that, I don't know if we've talked about it on show or just off mic, but one of the most difficult things to do when writing a character is to write a character as a comedian because if they you, have to be funny. They have to be funny. And as a comedian, sometimes it's really hard to write bits for someone that doesn't exist. <laughs> but so a lot of stand-up is very personal. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of grounding in there. And, and at least in a lot of modern stand-up, there's some more storytelling element to it. It's not easy to write quippy one-liners for stand-up. But because of the limited time you have in a movie or a TV show to show a stand-up comic, that's the style they typically write those in. 
which makes them not funny. Well, it, yeah, it's just the the fact that this is a show being written by drama writers, mm. I would assume they would uh, call themselves. <laughs> and comedy is not easy to write. Yes. And this is more than enough proof. <laughs> and also, how much time do you... It, it takes a while to craft stand-up. It is something... You're asking somebody to, for this one shot, spend several hours on these five lines of dialogue to prove Richie's funny. And that's a lot to ask. I can understand why those things get kind of left to the wayside. The problem isn't, though, just that this is, like, showing he's funny, that they they, they couldn't write a funny joke. Later, at the end of the movie... (laughs) This... When it has been defeated and it's it's showing it's Mike narrating and he's going over everyone's future, what what happened to everyone. And it shows that Richie's in a movie <laughs> and it's him and another dude in a what I don't want to call a forest set. It's like they're surrounded by a few. Yeah, they're in cowboy outfits. I thought they were in like safari outfits. (laughs) No. But they're holding (laughs) tennis clubs and like swinging them at each other and yelling. While like snow falls? Like they're like pouring a box of stuff on them? It was hilarious. It's, it's, It's just slapstick. Yeah, very it's slapstick. It's slapstick with no context and no humor. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's, the whole character's <laughs> shtick is bad. And he's, they made him the voice of reason, which yeah, is not was... also Richie's job, really. That's not what he brings to the table. He's shrill and unpleasant. That's he... probably the the one really like, ugh. I don't like that about this thing, actually. Yeah, I, I did not care for the the fact that they made all of the losers so reluctant. Mm-hmm. Yes. There it, yeah. was never a moment of reluctance yeah. in in the books. It's like they were all infused with a bit of Stan. Yeah. Which I don't, I, I guess, if I'm being kind, I could argue that that is a choice that was made as a way to connect that character Mm-hmm. to our adult losers. I think it was the writer's room was like, guys, we've got the guy from Night Court. He's <laughs> our star. So now we have to we have to beef up the role of adult Richie because this, I mean, at the time, They're he's their top build, yeah. the top build actor. So they put more on him and it changed you, the character. Yeah. And they yeah. And fundamentally changed the character because now they had they made him combative. So he had more dialogue and more screen time. I I am glad though, as I kind of hinted at earlier. No, Patrick. <laughs> None of those scenes. Which yes, I mean, thank of course God. not. But who? What would you guys think of our Henry Victor Belch or Chris, whatever their names I, are? I really liked the the Greaser Gang. I thought they were fun. They were that fun level of uh, gimmicky villain. Uh, you know, this, yep. the the first time you meet Belch, he belches in someone's face, and you're like, got it. I know that guy's deal. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're much less intensely terrifying. <laughs> yes, than uh, than the book. And I and I know there were scenes with them, but having finished it, looking back, I'm like they weren't really in that. No, <laughs> uh, no, they have a much smaller part. And yeah, Josh, you're right. They're just like '80s movie bullies. Mm-hmm. Uh, Until we get to the carve my name in Ben's belly, mm. that's the first moment that it really pulls back from that, oh, these aren't just that. There is mm-hmm. something darker when you see the other bullies that are like, you're not really you're not really going to carve your name into them. And that scene gives you the sense that if you'd not read this, that these were not going to be the type of bullies you think they're going to be. Yeah, it up the stakes pretty hard. I, I thought it was interesting. It felt like we very quickly had that rock fight which I feel like in the book was sort of the, that was like the midway, the halfway point, right? It, it was the culmination. I mean, that was the the moment where the losers come together for the first place. So that's mm-hmm. the culmination of the first half of the book. Yeah. And it happens, what, like 40 minutes we, in? <laughs> we, get, we get like the adult flashbacks. So we meet all the adults. And then 
I feel like we might have a few more scenes and then Mike comes running into that area and they save him and then they're looking at the photo album and then they're going into the sewers. It, it's it, it's quick. Yeah. I like it because it brings it makes Mike a part of it. And that's more one so, of the problems yeah. that I have with the book. We getting that rock fight brought all seven of them. So the rest of these journeys get mm-hmm. to have happen, happen with all of them. Yeah, that's a really good point, too. Can I also say that the chemistry between child Bev and Ben is great. Yeah. The 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 way those two actors played off each other in that first like meet cute they had, very adorable, all their interactions. I felt very sincere while adult <laughs> Ben and Bev. I, I kept thinking Remember how much we argued it should have been Ben. I I thought the exact same thing in in the middle. Okay, so this is... What, you guys are talking about like the best scene in the movie, right? The, the scene where uh, Ben is telling the story. I'm so glad they, they got to shoehorn in the story. Of Very how quickly. Ben got bullied into being skinny. But they enter into that story halfway through the, like mid sentence thank god <laughs> yeah and it's like all of them sitting around like you said earlier josh it's the whole vibe of this scene is childish they are all sitting around like cross-legged on the floor <laughs> but as ben is telling this story <laughs> bev is sitting between his legs and he is giving her the worst massage of all time <laughs> Really? It um, is all fingers. It's yeah, no tenderness. No. Not even any like real useful. No, <laughs> it is so uncomfortable. And the scene ends with him like <laughs> gently cupping her head in his hands. And petting and petting her hair. And petting her hair. It's so uncomfortable. And I had the thought, be careful what you wish for. You know, I think that 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 adult Ben and Pennywise had more chemistry when they oh, were making God, out that was than amazing. Ben and Beverly. <laughs> oh, but it did look like he was a second away from just snapping her neck <laughs> the way he was holding her head. Oh, that makeout scene with Pennywise was pretty fucking great. It, also, Ben should not kiss anyone ever. He, that was the the two of them seemed repelled by one another. Not as bad <laughs> as Tommy Knockers. Like I've never seen oh, yeah. more like opposite chemistry happening but yeah it wasn't super awesome (laughs) so what did you guys think of the sewer the standoff with the kids how it was portrayed in this it felt so fast to me (laughs) am i the only one oh a hundred percent it happens in what would be part one of how this miniseries is broken down i believe Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is just so crazy since we just read it and you've experienced those things simultaneously I I really liked Belch being just drugged through a broken tube. God, uh, that is the, the best. That's that cool. That's the best uh, special effect in the in the series, yeah. I think, because <laughs> it just slowly just dr- and he folds in half and just a slowly drug. It's eerie, and it's the look on his face mm-hmm. because he has this completely blank look on his face that is terrifying. And when Bauer's hair goes white and that just stays, which is great. Hmm. But the the one thing, the note I made is when it rushes past them in the sewer and we see its underbelly uh, glowing and they join hands and stand straight up perfectly still is that I like the idea of being immune to whatever is happening when they're all joined together but it's very silly to see. Yeah, it's anticlimactic. Okay, you've got Tim Curry. Give him that whole scene, like with Legend, Mm. just how he he ate up that scene. He tormented her. It was interesting and exciting to watch. He could have done that as Pennywise with these kids in that scene. Oh, for sure. The wild thornberries. (laughs) (laughs) Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. (laughs) So we, uh, in this part two of the miniseries, we have some flashbacks to them as children, but we primarily stay with them as adults. And as we said, it's basically just a couple hours of Richie 
talking about how, I mean, and he's not wrong, but talking about how <laughs> this is a terrible idea. They're all going to die. He's not going to stay. He's going to take off all of that. Can I detract? I know we're talking about Richie, but Richie is one of the, one of the biggest Richie scenes is the biggest problem with not only this adaptation and any adaptation of it. And it is it attacking Richie in the shower. That scene. Very scary scene. The hot water and the showers Mm -hmm. bursting around. Pennywise comes up from the drain and talks to him and then just leaves. Uh, (laughs) There's there. There's no in the book. Every time it has gone after the kids, uh, either the trance is broken, like uh, the the clock tower going off mm-hmm. that gets Ben to get away. Mm-hmm. There's something they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, Richie does something a voice. Something interrupts him. Something yeah. happens. It is not, it shows up to say boo and then leaves. And it that's what feeds into the, the Freddy Krueger-esque element that the mm-hmm. adaptations try to make of it. Mm-hmm. Of, oh, he feeds on your fear. So if you're not afraid of him, he can't hurt you. No, he can still fucking rip you apart because yeah. he is a monster. Mm. He's he's not <laughs> he's not imaginary. And that is what doing that to this character kind of boils it down to. Well, it it it, it makes the scene in the sewer with the battle less effective because there's it robs it of the tension of, yes, this is scary. It's not, you know, just about faith. It's hard to have faith when something can physically rip you apart, I guess. Is <laughs> it requires more true faith and sort of a stronger disposition with that. So it, it makes it seem like, oh, yeah, they're going to be fine. Uh, I'm sorry. I completely detracted your question uh, with I've, that tangent. But I just wanted to get it out there because we're getting to a point where that stuff starts to kind of feed back. I don't know what my question <laughs> is, but that's fine. Because <laughs> uh, the next thing that I, I had in my notes that I I was struck by that I was like, ooh, this is cool. And I think you guys laughed at it because that's how this always goes. But, but we are with Audra who's coming into town and she stops to ask for directions. <laughs> and the guy, I, did, I forgot this happened because I haven't seen it in a while. The guy she's talking to, gas station attendant, I think, is explaining, oh, you just, you know, go here, go down past the barrens. And she's like, the what? And when he's replying to her again, his voice changes into Pennywise's mm. voice. And it is so subtle and scary. And then she looks over and it's just Pennywise standing there and his <laughs> eyes get all flashy. So it, it kind of takes some of that away. But it was a really fun scene, I thought. It is very cool. Yeah, she gets uh, taken into the deadlights before she can even check in. And there is no Tom following Bev, which is fine. My, yeah, don't. we don't need yeah. that idiot. Since we talked about the deadlights, this is something I uh, I do I disagreed on when we talked about it in the book. But now imagine you only had this series to go on. Do the deadlights make any sense? Oh no, I can't divorce myself from it to feel like I'm <laughs> answering you honestly. Yeah, if, if okay, that's you fair. had not read the books and were going into this completely blind, no. When Bill is like. They're like, we saw lights, bright lights. And Bill's like, yeah, dead lights. We saw him. You'd be like, I, that means nothing <laughs> to me. Why are you saying that? Yeah. And like, we see his eyes glow. We see the lights come out of his abdomen. A- abdomen. I almost called it a uterus. Because <laughs> uh, it's a lady spider. I don't know what uh, lady I'm, spiders th- keep. Yeah, Josh, <laughs> lady spiders don't have uteruses. I know, but it's, <laughs> I was just thinking of the egg sac. Not the point. <laughs> the point is we get lights but even then that's not what the deadlights are we do get a little bit of it when the adults face off on it but we'll get to that yeah before we get to that we have let's talk more about mike because he is in this more josh like you said the actor but you know both actors portraying this character did a really great job the adult mike in this miniseries adult mike is amazing they're walking uh, right after the they meet for lunch and they're walking back to Mike's house and it's just him and Bill and Bill makes a joke about them being in poor town and then Mike just walks up to his <laughs> house. <laughs> it was right there. Such a great moment and he they do the reveal of silver and then there is a 5 minute montage of just two grown men biking around <laughs> having just having goofs. 
They put the playing cards in there. Like, it was such a sincere break from the tension Mm -hmm. that I felt like that was one of those moments that really used that odd amount of time very wisely. And it was a a return to childhood moment that worked. Yes. Mm -hmm. The other moments, unfortunately, did not work. Again, because we have this shrill character trying to, (laughs) you know, make everybody feel bad about doing stuff. Uh, what did you guys think about the uh, balloons of blood popping on people who can't see them in the library? <laughs> so good. So, so cool. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I just remembered something. We're not talking about the movies, but I need to give this miniseries a most sincere shout out because the scene in the restaurant with the fortune cookies, I'm going to complain about it when we get to the movies. Here, done well. The mm-hmm. The effects were real good the the eye in the yes. fortune cookie looks so real mm. and gross <laughs> but yeah some of the some of the effects are really really effective Very. the the blood balloons popping on people is such a cool just effect and also really impressive to just watch people try not to flinch <laughs> <laughs> that poor old lady. <laughs> she like flinches real hard real fast. But you forgive it because it's a mm-hmm. it's a cool effect. It's interesting because we spend so much time with them trying to figure out if they're on board when in the book they're just on board. So I mm-hmm. feel like we're robbed of some real connection and interesting things that we could learn about these characters as adults because that time is taken in that way. So I'm just going to skip ahead because it's just complaining. And then <laughs> I don't want to belittle it. It's not sure. that bad. But we are with Mike. And what did you guys think of the Henry Bowers reveal? Because we did get him in the asylum escaping. That was really cool. The, do- well, the, the dog head. The t- <laughs> yeah. The, I was chanting leading up to it because it, it does the scene really well with the figure walking up and mm-hmm. you only see it from the, mm-hmm. you know, chest down and then it pans up and it's uh it's a real dog in a car <laughs> it's a real I ass wanted, dog I in a person a practical costume. effect so dog cool. that was all gnarly looking honestly no, but it I don't, is just a dog i'm not gonna fault it for that it was still cool but it was interesting that they just did that so it's, um it's very literally. funny looking. yeah <laughs> i love it i love that was fucking great i loved it and i hated it uh the the reason being that I love that they moved it to they're all in the the dairy the dairy inn in mm-hmm. this version so that you don't have to spend all the time with the library and how far apart they are and everything. What I didn't like was you miss the fight mm. because yeah. it cuts to Ben making out with a clown. <laughs> and, kind of worth it. Maybe? And, <laughs> yeah, no, it is pretty worth it. Uh, and Eddie brushing his teeth and it just every time I get yeah. that. The uh, the idea being before it's revealed that Ben's making out with Pennywise that they're distracted and that's how Bowers is getting one over on him. Mm -hmm. But this is the moment that nearly kills Mike. And if we were going through it like the story when Mike gets a hero moment by giving the what ends up being the weakening thing that lets them defeat Henry. Mm -hmm. And we don't really get that. Cuts to from Bowers grabbing him and holding a knife on him. The next cut, he's holding his stomach because he's Mm -hmm. bleeding on the floor. And then the next cut, they roll Henry off and onto his knife. Ben and Richie or Eddie, they come rushing in and there's a little bit of a tussle with them and Henry. And it seems like accidentally (laughs) almost he gets stabbed with his own knife and then he rolls over dead in an action that makes no sense how you would accidentally stab yourself in the (laughs) chest based on that action it's in another person (laughs) so i i like that they simplified it but i wish we would have gotten just a a small action scene with mike tension yeah again that that's the the biggest fault i'll have generally with 90s miniseries I do have a a question about a scene that I want your guys' perspective on. The Mrs. Kirsch scene with Beverly. I thought that they, it it was effective like it is in the book. I I mean, they could have done just a ton. There's so much in the book (laughs) to pull from and do with that scene. But that, I think that was a tense moment, an effectively tense moment. They don't get the point across that Beverly drank poop 
<laughs> so that was a missed opportunity. <laughs> All right, let's go down into the sewers again. Two things stand out to me in in this whole final part of the adults in the sewers. The first one happens fairly early on, and and I I heard you guys kind of like gasp in response to this, the sailboat. Georgie's boat is just as iconic, Mm -hmm. is one of the the, uh, iconic bits of it. And having it be so, in the book, it be so prominent that this is when the boat leaves our story forever. Mm. Right, yeah. Having it come back here is such a cool, like, little, whoa, I was not Mm -hmm. expecting that. And it's such an effective way to have that jump scare of looking up and there's Ghost Georgie. It's crazy, though, because this this is part of its power this boat manifesting there yet it leads them to it did it draw them intentionally or was was bill defeating georgie in that moment shifting that power so now this boat is a useful tool i don't know the answer to that question Uh, that makes as much sense as anything i suppose i mean yeah either way really works because there's no evidence in the adaptation that pennywise is in any way afraid of them coming back as adults I do think that because in the book, it's very effective. They have to line up behind Bill because he's the only one who can defeat this one. Mm -hmm. And that's so important because we've seen them face off against other fears and physically repel them like the the eyeball Mm -hmm. or the werewolf. Mm -hmm. And because we didn't really get that, it it again gave me the the drawback of the adaptations that it's. There's no physical danger. It just takes one person to say, I don't believe. And then that's that mm-hmm. defeats the monster. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like it is a great scene because we just read it. But solo, uh, not a not a huge fan. But I do love the boat coming back. <laughs> we we find out a little earlier. But it, for me, it really hit home in this next scene when they're like really in the where it lives. Oh, about Ed? No. Being a virgin? Oh, God, yeah. Okay, there's that. <laughs> okay, no, we have to talk about this. Hold on, let's circle. Because I. this is a moment for Mike, because it. Okay. he said this, and then it really hit me when we're down there. Beverly kept her slingshot. Mike went back for the slugs like I 10 did years that. ago because he was suicidal, basically, is what he says. It's I. At first, I was like, wait, he just went back down into the sewers. That doesn't make... That's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, but once we were down there, it was more impactful to mm. think about him being down there by himself. <laughs> and what turned it around for me is before they go down into the sewers, Bill brings out these two slugs, and it's just the five of them mm-hmm. at this point. They And yeah. they're saying, you know, first it was Stanley, then it was Mike. Who's next? But Bill pulls out these two slugs and says, this one's for Stanley, this one's for Mike. And Richie says, we're all together now. Awesome. That yeah. part kind of gave me goosebumps. Yes. It did. That is one of the things about this miniseries. Clearly, the people involved respected the book mm-hmm. and and found ways to just enhance those moments that you can't really pull off visually. They found other ways to do that. And that's so awesome about yeah, this. Yeah, I, I loved that part. You want to talk about Eddie's? Uh, yeah, because... <laughs> The the immediate reaction is, why? (laughs) But I know why. Okay, so there's they find the door into its domain, which is a very cool... At first, I was like, that's silly looking, because it's a tiny door. But once they start crawling through it, and it's all covered in bones and candles, it's very cool. (laughs) Um... Anyway, they come to this door and Eddie stops them all. And they're like, wait, wait, wait. I haven't been telling you guys the truth. (laughs) I'm a virgin. (laughs) And it's just like played for laughs because Richie's like, can't help you there, bud. Okay, let's go. Oh, is this a callback? It is specifically a response to the scene. Yes, that's. It is specifically Mm -hmm. so the makers of the series can go. That scene never happened. 
Because our joke, like, we laughed about it because we're like, Haha, not true, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But that is specifically, <laughs> they put in a reference to make one character to make sure it is clear, <laughs> no, you? they've never yes. had sex together. Do you think that's why Stephen King gets defensive about it? Because people <laughs> go out of their way to make it unhappen? <laughs> Well, that's uh, that also brings up the fact that he lives with his mom mm-hmm. in this that he he's not married to someone he doesn't have he didn't have that same relationship that Fits Beverly his had. Still, that's really interesting. <laughs> I hadn't even thought of it, it as it a way has to, to be the reason. It's the only reason for that line to be there. All right, this is it, you guys. I'm just gonna say major. Completely sincere respect for claymation monsters. I am oh, on board one hundred percent. Amen. I and I know it doesn't look like real i don't give a shit i fucking love it it's so great it is some real ray harryhausen yeah. shit uh when they enter the domain and we finally see it in mm-hmm. its true form and it looks like mcp pants <laughs> uh from aqua teen hunger force yeah it kind of does uh in 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 ray harry house claymation i i mean that in the most respectful way possible by the way yeah it looks very it, it, i forgot what its true form looked like mm-hmm. in this version because when i think about it i think about the version in the remakes where they made it half scars guard half uh, spider you can't get rid of scars so. <laughs> <laughs> but going full monstrous because they even have tim curry appear as smoke to say mm. that you haven't you can't see what i look like mm-hmm. it's just what you can grasp and so i thought that was cool to leave nothing recognizable yeah uh i, I thought that was a good touch however the downside is that any of the scenes with the physical interaction right. mm-hmm. is it's very stiff. I mean, it's yeah. not as egregious as Tommy knockers when he uh, <laughs> throws the, that bo- yeah. the, 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 the body the floppy <laughs> alien yeah. blow up doll. <laughs> it's not, it's not that egregious, but uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's a sign of the times. Yeah. They, yeah. they couldn't do much better. If they had had some like, like gore in those scenes, which they didn't cause it's on TV. It, it would have helped a lot with that. I did also, I don't think this was supposed to be comedic, but it was very comedic when one after the other, yes. <laughs> our boys got caught up in the deadlights. They're like, I'll help you. Oh, no, no that <laughs> made me laugh so hard. It rears up and the deadlights aren't in its eyes, which is what I always imagined. It's, it's in its, uh, its uterus. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in its like weird chest uterus. Like that, that uterus. <laughs> And Bill runs Ladies. up and, and stares into it and freezes. And then who is, is it, it next? I think it's Richie. Richie's like, oh, no, Ben! Or, no, Bill! And runs up and does the... It, him <laughs> and, and ben. ben does the exact same thing. It, it Comedic timing-wise, mm-hmm. the funniest thing that happens in the <laughs> miniseries. Yeah. And Beverly very seemingly casually decides to just run around it to pick up the slugs that she missed and really thought we were going to get the a great Eddie scene. And it was still oh, lackluster. I, I realized reflecting back on it, he was basically distracting it while Beverly was behind it, picking up the slugs. Yeah. That was the purpose. But I was sad that his hero moment mm. was robbed because it did not have any, like, the aspirator had no effect on it, so yes. he just got crushed instead. And that's and, the thing, is it doesn't seem like he got crushed. It sh- like, I would have, <laughs> what a simple sound effect would have changed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, true. he doesn't get crushed so much as he gets picked up to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Okay, another fun, like, editing, a, a cut that threw all of us in different ways was... They defeat it by kicking it a bunch yeah, <laughs> and then ripping out its heart. And then we go do a shadow on the wall, showing them all hold up its heart. And then Bill sees Audra because everything's coming down. I thought that was really cool. Mm-hmm. And so Bill's pulling her down. And then we cut to her without any cobwebs on her. And I was like, what? And, and they're outside. <laughs> like, they're all out of the sewers. Well, especially because of the way she's wrapped up in this web. I thought her hair had gone white as she mm-hmm. as he's like bringing her down i was like oh they made her hair go white like henry that that's kind of a cool touch 
and then it jarringly cuts <laughs> to outside, and she's, she's in, just fine. She's in the same position mm-hmm. in the cut. Yes. So you think they forgot to put the webbing back on her or something? It's <laughs> very jarring. No, they picked her clean. So this is where we get, you know, you guys already talked about Richie's happy ending as a movie star. And, and, and Bev and Ben's happy ending. Yeah, Ben, we were to right. Be very, very <laughs> uncomfortably with <laughs> Bev. <laughs> Too bad they don't have chemistry. It's man. I, I'm glad that they went. They they symbolized that the curse being broken by saying that uh, Beverly and Ben got pregnant, as opposed to way to do it in the book where they just Bill gets a boner. <laughs> Uh, which is what happens on the bike. <laughs> so I, I like that that was a little different. Yeah. Although everybody still forgets. I hope they mm. don't forget how they met and why she's pregnant. <laughs> See, that's the problem, I feel it's like. It's very 50 first dates. It's not. <laughs> Can you consent if you can't remember? I also, I also don't understand the timetable because Mike is saying we're already forgetting that it's been... A week, <laughs> but I know that they're doing these yeah. movie. He's doing this movie. They are married and pregnant within three weeks, and oops, I have to. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't. I, I have to ask Bill what his name is sometimes, and we laugh. It just yeah. seems like that that epilogue. I could have done without an, an epilogue. I get why people want it because you mm-hmm. you go through you go through an epic story and you want that resolution mm. you want to know everybody lived happily ever after but let's face it this is not a happily ever after story it is not i don't know they left henry's dead body in their <laughs> in their fucking <laughs> hotel room oh, yeah. and mike's like yeah the cops were uh, perf- uh like it was a minor perfunctory and uh, <laughs> kind of breezed over it you know i will say though watching <laughs> I was very taken out of this moment because I was thinking about the actual actors doing the scene. Ben and Audra on the bike on Silver. Very scary. So scary. <laughs> very unsafe. I do like the one be, because we know what's coming up in the book. We see him getting her in the cab and it's it's all over. And then he spies Silver and he hears Hayo Silver away in his head. And then head. we cut back to the cabbie for some reason. That was my favorite cut. <laughs> I was wanted to watch the cabbie be like, what what are they I doing? wanted to do that old thing where he like picks up a jar of liquor, looks at it, and then throws it over his shoulder. Like I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this was missing. Yeah. I does the I get again forgiving budget and era this was made. Does losing the destruction of dairy at the time of its death do anything for you guys one way or the other we didn't have any of that Mm. because that's something that happens throughout it uh, it does for me but having said that i also have to recognize what you can and should do visually what what needs to be cut for sure and I just want my, I want to have my cake and eat it too. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's tough because obviously budget, you can't destroy a town right. uh, on, you know, national TV. It it does make it seem a little less like this grand thing that happened. Like mm-hmm. they did something. You don't get that because the child murders are referenced. They are there. That's supposed to be a big part of it, but you don't feel the impact of that or the destruction of the town. Yeah. Yeah, the the tidal wave yeah, of I, this evil being released is... Uh, yeah, because it's hinted at throughout the book with there's something wrong with dairy. Dairy is corrupted in some way. But it is less that, like, in the book, it's not that dairy is corrupted so much as dairy is irre- irrevocably connected to it mm-hmm. to the point that killing it kills dairy. Mm-hmm. And that isn't so much shown here. That just made me realize that I think that is a big thing that's missing. Derry never feels like a character. Derry doesn't this. feel like Derry. It feels like they're in a pl- like a beautiful place for the record. Something I didn't imagine as Derry at all. <laughs> so let's let's rate it. Do one of you guys want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. Uh, I've talked. I feel like I've talked a lot of shit. 
Uh, but that's just because it's the 90s <laughs> and it's made for TV and it's really fun to pick all that apart. It is. For nostalgia's sake compared to what we have now. I really, I love what it represents as such a starting off point for how so many people I know found their way to King. And it's one of the earliest King memories I have is seeing it. And so it, it just means a lot to me in that way. But going straight from reading the book to watching it, there's definitely more misses than hits. So I am going to give it four out of five blue chambray shirts. I'm going to say if you kept bringing up the, you, you couldn't help comparing it to other 90s miniseries, uh, which I think is completely fair. They all have a very consistent look and feel. Um, but when I put this up to the other TV miniseries we have watched for this show, 90s miniseries like uh, Tommy Knockers and The Stand, even more modernish ones like Rose Red, <laughs> I feel like this one was the most enjoyable. I, I, I thought that this maybe didn't 100% hold up, but it's it's a fun watch. Uh, I give it a solid four out of five blue chambray shirts. I, I kept mentioning sort of the pitfalls of it being in that decade, but I'm not going to fault it in my rating mm. for any of those things. The only thing that will affect my rating is that there were times when I felt myself waiting for it to be done. <laughs> just, just a little, you know, pacing, which might yep. say more about me than the series itself. I don't know. I'll let you guys all decide that for yourselves. But for that reason, I'm also going to give it four out of five blue chambray shirts. That's it for this episode of Dairy Public Radio. As always, thank you for listening. Join us for our next episode where we will be covering the Patreon selection from Michelle Devane, Dolores Claiborne. And we will be reading through, I don't know, 150-ish pages because there's no chapters. So just kind of read halfway through and we'll figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's correct. <laughs> For Benjamin Graham. It <laughs> <laughs> Read until you hit the there last paragraph on that one page <laughs> and then stop. Depending on which issue of the book you have. Absolutely. <laughs> For Benjamin Graham and CM Alexander, I'm Joshua Khan reminding you, there's something terribly wrong here in Derry, and you know it. <laughs> Hey everyone, CM Alexander here. Thank you for listening to It Part 6. We hope you enjoyed it. I want to say a quick word about our sponsor for the It series, Manscaped. We're so happy that they've chosen to be our sponsor for these past three months because they're really an amazing and fun company, and they very graciously sent us a new batch of products to try. The newest product we've gotten our hands on include their Ultra Premium Body Wash. I shower, and I hope you guys shower too. This body wash smells awesome. It's cologne infused and it has aloe vera and sea salt, which helps keep your skin feeling clean, nice, and moisturized. And they also sent us chapstick. If you're like me, you have chapstick in your bag, your favorite spot in the living room, in the kitchen, in the bedroom, a couple more in your bag. You guys have like 50 lip glosses at all times, just within your vicinity, right? Well, their lip gloss is awesome. Maybe you're shy about your balls and you don't even want to talk about it or hear me talk about it. Well, with so many awesome products to try, that's okay. You can find all kinds of things at Manscaped to up your hygiene game. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DAIRY at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code DAIRY. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. That's all for now, listeners. Goodbye.